Hello, and welcome to my presentation titled Nutrition Management of Ischemic Colitis with Complications. Uh, my name is Susan Herrera. I am one of the PHFE WIC dietetic interns. And why I chose this topic? Well, I wasn't familiar with this condition, so I took interest in that. And two, because of the patient's length of stay. Uh, a usual patient at the hospital where I was doing my rotation was mostly seven days max, but this patient was there more than two weeks. And so I just wanted to know why and what is the condition. And so here we go. So what is ischemic colitis? And so if we go one word at a time, ischemia is defined as deficient of the blood to a body part. And colitis is the inflammation of the colon or the large intestine. So putting those words together, that ischemic colitis is inflammation in the colon caused by a reduction in blood flow to the large intestine. And because of the diminished blood flow, there's not enough oxygens for the cells, which can result damaged tissue in the intestine. Also ischemic colitis most often occurs in older adults over 60 years old, and it is most prevalent in women. All right, symptoms, causes, and diagnosis. A person with IC will have symptoms of stomach cramps, abdominal discomfort, nausea, and bloody stool. And these symptoms mimic symptoms of inflammatory bowel diseases, such as Crohn's disease, which is quite different from ischemic colitis. Uh, so due to the similar signs and symptoms, Diagnosis is completed by imaging tests, um, such as CT scans, so the doctors could rule out any other gastrointestinal disorder. Uh, these symptoms are typically short-term in mild cases. And what causes it? So, uh, like I said, most, most prevalent to older uh, individuals, older than 60 years old, and in women, and people who have underlying diseases, such as diabetes, IBS, heart failure, peripheral vascular disease, and chronic constipation. And also research says the use of methamphetamine, cocaine, and certain medications, um, for example, aspirin. All right, so treating an individual with mild case of IC includes antibiotics, IV fluids, and bowel rest with a clear liquid diet. Um, and when starting solids, there's actually no set diet for patients with ischemic colitis, but it is best to address a well-balanced whole foods to minimize inflammation. So staying away from greasy, caffeine, um, spicy foods, and alcohol, of course. Um, doctors and RDs may recommend trying a low residue diet and gradually increase fiber. And some tips that we can offer it is also... Um, trying small, frequent meals, uh, chew food thoroughly, and of course, staying hydrated. Okay, so here's my case study. My patient is an 85-year-old white female with diabetes type 2, hypertension, and hyperlipidemia. Uh, she arrived at the ER with symptoms of bloody stool, pain in the left lower quadrants for more than five days, tingling, and numbness of the right upper extremity. Imaging tests were made and a CT scan revealed the ascending colon is distended in which correlates uh, individuals with IC. My patient was very poor historian, so I wasn't able to get enough information from her, uh, but she does deny alcohol abuse. She has history of smoking. However, she stopped smoking 10 years ago. She lives with her daughter and son-in-law. Um, she takes numerous prescription drugs, that including aspirin daily. And to reiterate what I said on the previous slide, patient has diabetes for 10 years, um, has hypertension, hyperlipidemia as well. Nutrition assessment. So the diet order was NPO, so nothing by mouth. My patient had nausea and constipation. She also had a deep tissue pressure injury in the coccyx area. Um, her labs showed high glucose and high triglycerides. She weighed 186 pounds and her height is five feet. 
making her BMI 36.6, which falls under the obesity category. And following the hospital guidelines for nutritional needs, I went based on wound healing and I added 25 times 55 kilograms and 30 times 55 kilograms, giving me 1375 to 1650 kcals. And 55 kilograms is based on her adjusted body weight. And this is just following the hospital guidelines due to high percent IBW. Now her protein needs, I used 1.5 to 2, and it gave me a total of 68 to 91 grams. For wound healing to take place, both energy and protein needs must be met. Okay, for her nutrition diagnosis, I did inadequate energy and protein intake related to the medical condition, fecal impaction, and increased needs for wound healing as evidenced by NPO times four days. My patient was also on antibiotics and IV fluids and was in the progress to recovery. So for my intervention, I considered a clear liquid diet for bowel, bowel rest and gradually increased to a mechanical soft diabetic diet. And the goal was for the patient to receive an oral diet within three days and to monitor biochemical data um, medical tests, procedures, and monitor nutrition progression. And again, reassess in three days. My patient was kept on NPO due to procedures and more CT scans and an unexpected complication emerged. Uh, she was transferred to the ICU due to a rapid response of sinus tachycardia. She was also intubated and sedated with propofol, uh, but a week later, propofol was discontinued. Uh, TPN was also ordered, but not started, and she had new current diagnosis, and it was septic shock, hollow viscous perforation, respiratory failure, fecal impaction, and rectal vaginal fistula. Uh, during her time in the ICU, she also had a right colectomy, uh, which is a procedure that involves removing the right side of the colon and attaching the small intestine to the remaining portion of the colon. For the slide, I just want to share some common indications for TPN since my patient is now on total parenteral nutrition. Some common indications would be patients with severe acute pancreatitis, severe short bowel syndrome, mesenteric ischemia, which is similar to ischemia colitis, but it's mesenteric means small intestine. Um, ileus and or abdominal trauma also would be an indicator for TPN. Preterm infants with severe respiratory distress, immature gut motility, and function. And last bullet is GI fistulas. On the previous slide, I did mention my patient had rectovaginal fistula, which indicates she needs nutrition support. During the interdisciplinary medical rounds, the physician asked for recommendations for TPM formula. And the pharmacist uh, formulated this, which is amino acid 6%, dextrose 15% at 65 ml per hour, 250 ml for 20% lipids on Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. So that's four days per week. My role, as you can see, all the math here is to calculate the formula just to verify if it's meeting my patient's needs, nutrition needs. And so I will not go so much in detail, but feel free to take a picture. And if you have questions about it, you can always send me an uh, email and I'm more than happy to answer. Also, these uh, calculations were verified by my preceptor. So this is what I got. Total KCALs, 1458. Uh, total fluids, 1703 ml, 234 grams for dextrose, 94 grams for amino acids. Percent KCAL from fat was 20%. And the GIR, 1.68 milligrams per kilograms per minute. So what does that even mean? So if you recall on the previous slides, her estimated energy needs was 1375 to 1650. And this calculation or this formula gave me uh, 1458 kcals, which meets more than 80% of her estimated nutrition needs, which is great. Her new nutrition diagnosis is altered GI function related to fistulas as evidenced by TPN dependent. 
So now my nutrition intervention is to recommend to continue with TPN since it meets more than 80% of estimated nutrient needs. So goal is met because the initial goal was for her to meet at least 75% of estimated needs from all sources of nutrient intake. Okay, so I still would like to continue monitoring her biochemical data, medical tests, procedures, nutrition-focused physical findings, parenteral nutrition infusion, body composition, growth, and weight. And we'll reassess uh, in five days. In conclusion, so my patient later was discharged with home TPN uh, because she had rectal vaginal fistula. So that means she became TPN dependent indefinitely, which is parental nutrition administered outside of the hospital. All right, so here's the last page. These are my reference. Um, and I just wanna say thank you. Thank you for your time in um, listening to my presentation. Hope you learned something new. And again, if you have any questions, you can always feel free to send me an email. Thank you.